Hey everybody, Dr. Clark here. Did you know about the connection between herpes and Alzheimer's? Now, it's not genital herpes, by the way. We're talking about herpes 1, which is the one that shows up with cold sores. Uh, there's been some great research been done for the last several years that shows, and just recently published, that many cases, in fact, a huge number of people with Alzheimer's have herpes infections and herpes virus in their brain tissue. Now, You've probably never heard of that before, but this is what I've been saying for a long time. Alzheimer's, like Parkinson's, is a garbage can diagnosis. It's just describing some symptoms. It's not saying what's causing what you're seeing or what you do about it. Now, the main thing I want to tell you today is if you know someone that's been diagnosed with early Alzheimer's or they're under about age 40 or 50, they need to be assessed for this. You may hear some noises today, by the way. They're doing some construction on the roof, so we'll see if they don't... Uh, use any chemicals that give me Alzheimer's. Herpes virus sticks around. That's the main thing. It is not something that's easy to get rid of. And over time, what we think happens is it travels to the brain, it causes inflammation, and over time, you get these deposits in the brain that just destroy your brain function. Alzheimer's, as I said a second ago, is very much like the fibromyalgia diagnosis, the autism diagnosis, multiple sclerosis diagnosis. I mean, the list goes on and on. They're just words. They're labels. They don't tell you why that person has that problem. They don't tell you what to do about it. That's why, for example, in my office, when we see someone with Alzheimer's in the program that I use, we have to take a step back, right, and say, what's the big picture here? What's going on? What are all the factors that I know based on research and science and all kinds of clinical experience that could make a person develop these signs of Alzheimer's? The bottom line is it's inflammation. Now, inflammation could be caused by a long-term gluten sensitivity or gluten reactivity is what I like to call it. Could be a long-time uh, long herpes simplex infection that's causing inflammation in the brain that no one's ever going to find, no one's ever going to look for. And what's going to happen is they're slowly going to decline. I mean, geez, two weeks ago I saw a lady that's been on 53 medications in the last four years. They spent like $80,000. Nothing works. The bottom line is, She's got inflammation, but the medical model, God bless them, the medical model says, hey, you got Alzheimer's, take this, we'll see you in about eight months, we'll see if it worked. We've got to be more proactive than that. I mean, I hope you agree. If you have a loved one that's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, you need to know there are things that you can do, but it, there's nothing you can do if you, don't, you know, if you don't take action, if you don't look for it. I mean, the doctors that I train, what I try to tell them is that, you know, there's 50 different reasons why someone could get diagnosed with Alzheimer's. You need to be able to be good enough to investigate all of them, to be able to know what those 50 are and how to find them. Now, that's hard to do, isn't it? That's not just as simple as, you know, hey, I'm going to turn to my book here, and I'm going to flip to my Alzheimer's page and give you these four supplements. or give you. That's not the way it works. It's complex. And what this new study has just confirmed, the complexity of it is that these conditions, you know, if you want this, the, the, the really fast road to not getting any results with Alzheimer's or a chronic condition, just take a medication and hang out. See what happens. Just see what happens. You know what's going to happen. You're going to get slow but steady and absolute decline. You've got to halt the process and distraction. You've got to do a thorough enough workup to make that happen. So I'm going to give you a couple of things you can do right now that if you've got early Alzheimer's, you can do these things right now. It'll be safe and it'll help. I promise you it will help. I didn't say it would cure Alzheimer's, right? Because I can't say that, but it will help. And these aren't crazy things. These are simple things to help reduce inflammation in the brain. You ready? Number one, get off of gluten, get off of casein, get off of soy. All three of those things are highly antigenic, meaning your immune system recognizes them, and they're extremely an extremely common problem for a lot of people. I mean, you've seen all the posts I've had on the research that connects gluten to all kinds of neurological problems, and it's doing that through its inflammation. So get off gluten, get off casein, get off soy. Um, I guess the other thing I would tell you, that's probably the safest thing I can tell you to do. Um, you do those things, you make that person be active, you make them be cognitively active, don't let them sit in a chair all day, take them outside, make them go places. Those are ways that even if they've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, you can help them preserve their brain function. Now, of course, the real help is going to be when you find out what the heck is really going on, right? Why do they have that problem? What caused it? And that, you know, that can take some effort, but that's my job. That's what I do. So herpes simplex virus number one is definitely connected 
to Alzheimer's disease. And the, the, the doctor that I, that I read this study about says she thinks that it's about 60% of cases are related to herpes infection. Now, does that mean you can just go take Valtrex and everything's going to be okay? No, it doesn't mean that because suppressing the herpes virus it would certainly be part of what you wanted to do, um, but you've still got an inflammation problem that you've got to take care of. And there's a lot of natural, powerful things you can do that will exactly accomplish that goal, getting rid of that inflammation in the brain. So, it's Dr. Clark. That's all for today. So remember, go gluten-free, casein-free, soy-free. You will feel better. It can only help your person that you love that has Alzheimer's.